So breaking down Tennessee's secondary a little bit, you can check that out on offthehooksports.com. And there's actually competition. Willie Martinez, Tennessee's defensive backs coach, pointed that out. They've had injuries previously in spring camp. They've, of course, had transfer issues that is that have hurt them on defense after the change from Jeremy Pruitt to Josh Heupel. But this is a deeper group. Actually, five incoming players that were midterm enrollees all competing for jobs. So the fact that this is a deeper group, first down, Caleb Calhoun, how encouraging is that for the Vols this upcoming season in 2023? So it's deeper, but we are talking about five guys that are midterm enrollees and they're about true freshmen, essentially. I do think that's encouraging. There, yes, there are some true, there are quite a few true freshmen that have raw talent, but I, I, you're the one who taught me that because I did not know that that cornerback is one of the few positions where you can just pluck somebody in. It, because not plug somebody in where you don't have to learn a lot to step into the role. And so I do think that I do think that's encouraging with more depth. that makes it more likely you'll find somebody special. It kind of reminds me of, of and I want to know your thoughts on this, not the same scale, not the same scale for it. Don't people do not say I'm accusing this of being anything like 1998, but 1998 lost a lot more. Key, there were a lot of key stars lost from 97. But 98 was actually a lot deeper of a team than 97, if you go back and think about it, because that 97 recruiting class was more experienced by then. And you could say yeah, that. I thought, I thought the 99 team was actually better than 98 team. Yes. Yes. The 99 yeah, I think team the 90, you could argue the 97 and 99 team were both better than the 1998. But 97 lost. 98 was deeper than a lot of those teams. 97 and 99 probably had more stars, but I think 98. 98 wasn't as deep as 99. I'll take that back. It was deeper than 97, though. 97 was more star-driven. So you had Peyton Manning, Marcus Nash, those guys. But you didn't have as many. It didn't seem like the roster could go too deep, three deep everywhere like it could in 98. Well, let's get to those freshmen that you mentioned. Um, second down, Christian Conyer, Ricky Gibson, Jack Luttrell, Jordan Matthews, and John Slaughter are the midterm enrollees that are uh, participating, and they're the ones that – Willie Martinez wanted to talk about that, uh, talk about. So out of that group, who do you think has the biggest upside? It's either Ricky Gibson or Jordan Matthews. I think I, I, I'm leaning on Ricky Gibson. Not sure how they're describing them in practice between the two of them, but it's one of those two. I think one of them will maybe become a, a star pretty quickly. I'm actually pretty high on one of them. Okay, and then third down, uh, Gabe Judy Lawley, is he perhaps the transfer that we've overlooked because he was at BYU and Vanderbilt. That's not a great, monstrous football pedigree. However, here's a guy who was really taken aback by his press conference poise and saying, I'm just here to help where I can. He's played safety and corner. Uh, I think he may not even be a starter in the fall, Caleb, but – he will be the first guy off the bench at a number of positions and will play a lot. I think that is – and Tennessee had issues in terms of injuries last year. I think that's been overlooked. I like they gave Judy Lawley pick up a lot after listening to his comments and talking to some people about him yesterday. Yeah, here are two takeaways with Gabe Judy Lawley that I'm kind of intrigued by. One, they trotted him out yesterday or two days ago, and Willie Martinez talked about him extensively, which you wrote about. I feel like you're not doing that unless you see a lot of potential in the guy. Two, more importantly, one of the most underrated losses for Tennessee last year that they had to replace, we knew they had to replace Elante Taylor at cornerback, but replacing Theo Jackson at nickel was a huge deal. Nickel was awful last year. I think to Marion McDonald, didn't he hold down the, the fort most of the year? And he just, he struggled severely. And I think that you might be able to see Gabe Giudiliali step into that nickel role. No, uh, I think you're right. Uh, four downs brought to you by Andy Mason real estate.com. We'll get to fourth down after I tell you that Andy Mason real estate.com can take, save you a ton of money, thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. Andy Mason real estate.com over 40 years of experience right there in Knoxville in the real estate field. It's awesome. Andy Mason real estate.com. It is absolutely the best service and the best prices from any realtor in Knoxville. How's that? So this Tennessee defense, and in the secondary, here's fourth down, rated, ranked 12th. 
among passing yards allowed. What's a successful season statistically for this defense, considering that the balls are going to put their defense in a bad position because of their offense by nature of what they do offensively? What's a good yeah. season? Well, first, let's point out that yards allowed is a completely overrated stat for this defense. They run tempo. There are so many, so many possessions that they're just going to allow a lot of yards. I, I think agree. we both agree with that, right? Yes, no doubt. So the question then becomes yards per attempt. And I would say a successful season for this defense would be giving up less than giving up less than seven yards per attempt through the air. How about that? Don't give up seven yards per attempt. I'll make it a little bit more simple. At the end of the day, whatever statistical measurement we use, they need to be in the top half of the SEC. Okay. I mean, I mean, really, I mean, Tennessee is recruiting at a level that its coaches should have them, if not this year, then really soon, like 2024. They I should don't know. Be, they should be top half. I'm not saying they need to be one or two because of the offense that they play. They, they, they can be top half offense. in the Yeah, East. see, I have, I'm going to have an issue with that because I don't think it's possible. Their defense plays so many possessions that I don't know if it's possible in raw scoring defense for them to be in the top half of the SEC. I mean, when you run against a team like Kentucky, Tennessee could theoretically have a better defense than Kentucky, but Kentucky plays half the possessions in a game that Tennessee plays. They're just naturally going to give up fewer points. Well, but if Tennessee doesn't start to develop a little bit of a four-minute drill on offense, that's always going to be a problem. So I'm assuming that's going to start to happen, that once or twice a game when they have control, once or twice a second half, that they're going to be able to control the ball instead of just scoring at will quickly. I'm, I mean, I'm assuming that's how they develop as a program. So as a program, I think Tennessee's defense needs to be top half in the SEC. I don't think that's asking too much, even with the up and down offense. All right. I think they should be top half in yards allowed per play. I'm, I'm more, I focus in this day and age in football. I, I'm real big on yards per play, points per play, points per possession, those type of things. Yeah, I mean, I'll take that metric. That that metric works just fine for me. Uh, check out that on offthehooksports.com. 